Can the Seattle Seahawks get value out of all the resources they have poured into their defensive line in 2024? What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome back. We have another prediction video here, and now we are moving to the other side of the football. We are moving over to the defense, specifically to a position, an area of the team where there has been a massive investment. And on paper, the investment has paid off. There are many respected NFL writers out there who will tell you that the Seattle Seahawks have one of the best defensive lines in the league. And they got there by pouring massive resources into that position over the last couple years. Leonard Williams, they gave him $63 million last year after trading a second round pick and a fifth round pick to get him at midseason. Byron Murphy was a mid first round selection. The offseason prior, they gave Draymond Jones about $52 million. They spent a middling draft pick on Mike Morris. They gave a two-year free agent contract to Jaron Reed a couple off-seasons ago. So they have spent on this position, so it should be a position of strength. And if it's not, that bodes very poorly for what the Seahawks will be able to do in the 2024 season. And it also bodes very poorly towards this front office's ability to recognize what they should be doing and who they should be investing their resources on. So we're going to take a look at this admittedly very impressive on paper defensive line, offer up some statistical predictions. Now, when it comes to players on the defensive line, especially in a 3-4 defense, like we're presumably going to be running or whatever you want to call this Mike McDonald defense, the stats are not going to tell the whole picture. There's a lot more that needs to be gotten into. There's a lot more that goes into whether or not these guys are doing their job. I understand that. But we're going to do the best we can with the information that we have. There's a lot of things that go beyond the box score, beyond the numbers. I think we all understand that. And I think we all understand that this will only tell a part of the picture. But the box score can help. Before we get into the numbers here, I want to ask that if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, click the bell if you want notifications, consider becoming a channel member as well, join the channel, costs about $2 a month, and let's open her up with Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams, certainly a guy we have massive expectations for these next couple years. So... Leonard Williams traditionally has been a player that gets a lot of tackles on the defensive line. I do think that that'll diminish a little bit this year because we have a thicker rotation. He shouldn't have to play as much. And I also, it's hard to know exactly what McDonald and Dirty uh, and Dirt are going to do with their defensive linemen compared to what we did previous years. Are we going to be asking them to do gap and a half? Or are we going to be asking them to do, you know, single gap stuff? How are they going to be utilized? Are they going to be doing gap shooting or are they going to be just trying to take absorb attention from the blockers? What exactly is going to be the utilization? And there have been reports in training camp that Leonard Williams is playing a bunch of different positions in McDonald's defense. So how he's utilized might affect his stats. I don't think it'll affect how good a player he is. But I went with 57, which would be a decrease from his better seasons in the past. Just because I don't think he'll be playing as much. He is past his prime age-wise. So I I don't think it's going to go up. And I don't think it's going to be as high as it usually is. But he'll be doing his job. So 57 tackles. And then I went with 9 tackles for loss. It would be kind of weird to give $63 million to Leonard Williams. And not have him do things that he does well. Like shooting gaps. So he'll do it some. He'll make some plays in the backfield. And I think we'll be pretty happy with his playmaking ability, even if it goes one way or the other based on the new coaching staff. So nine tackles for loss, and I went with six and a half sacks. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it's a little bit lower, because again, I think that there will be some situations where he's playing more so to occupy attention rather than be the playmaker himself. But 
Leonard Williams has built a career on being the guy who makes the play at least some of the time. I don't think you get away from that completely. Not that six and a half sacks is a lot, but it would be a pretty significant amount for a guy in this defense where I expect there to be a lot of creative stuff going on. However, when it comes to pressures, I think things are going to be on the uh, downswing just a little bit. 22, which is not radically different than what he did last year. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think he had 23 last year, according to PFR, in 18 games. And by the way, when I'm talking about pressure numbers in this video, I'm talking about PFR because that's the site that I use for defensive stuff. So, Leonard Williams, 22 pressures in, let's call it like 15 or 16 games. He probably won't play all 17, but I don't think he's going to suffer any significant injury. He'll just miss a game to wear or tear here or there. And... I think that with the rotation that we should have up front, that'll be good enough to justify the money we spent on him. Maybe it won't be the case, look, going into 2026 that we feel that way when the number goes up, but for now, I think it will be fine. Okay, so Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy the second. Um, this one's tough because obviously we invested a high pick in him. We really like him. We think he's going to be a really good player, but... From college, we know he is not really the finisher. He's not really the guy who makes the play. He's the guy who sets the play up. He's kind of like when that year we had uh, Clowney. Clowney was our best pass rusher by far that year. But he only had, I think, three and a half sacks that season because getting the sack was not his game. His game was disrupting and allowing somebody else to get in there and get the sack. That's kind of what Byron Murphy the second is. He's a guy who disrupts and then doesn't actually make the play himself. So even though I think he'll play a good amount and I think he'll be impactful, I went with 25 tackles, which seems like not a lot, but you, you look at his Texas tape, you look at what he did in college, and it's not just how he's being used. It's also the fact that he's not that good of a tackler. He has opportunities to make plays that he just doesn't hit because the tackle slips out of his grasp. So you put those two things together, I think it'll be like a tackle and a half, maybe slightly more a game. Tackles for loss, imagine he'll make some backfield plays happen. Hard for me to believe that he isn't utilized in that capacity, at least some of the time. I went with six tackles for loss for the same reasons as the low tackle count. I don't think it'll be super high, but when you're making plays in the backfield, sometimes you get a chance to make a play on our back or a quarterback who hasn't had the opportunity to build up speed because they're still in the backfield. So it's a little bit easier. And then with sacks, I just went with three and a half. And I understand that people are going to look at that and say that's low. But again, I'm not really looking for Byron Murphy to be the guy who finishes the play. I'm just looking for him to be the guy who disrupts. And I do think he will be disruptive. I have 15 pressures for him. But that would probably be about one a game if he doesn't play the entire season, which players, um, I don't know if it's reasonable to expect any player to play every game on the defensive line in the modern NFL. I think that there will probably be a push to kind of give, especially a younger player who just came into the league, a game off just for like load management purposes. So 15 pressures on PFR is actually very good. That would actually put him among the best defensive players in the league, probably. As long as he's holding his own against the run as well. And I would expect Leonard Williams and Byron Murphy to both play the well, uh, play the run quite well. All right, then we have Draymond Jones. This one's interesting, I know, because we don't know what Draymond's going to do this year, and it sounds like they're going to be very flexible with him. For the purposes of this video, I put him on the defensive line, but keep in mind, he's probably going to play on the edge some as well. He's going to be moving around in this defense. He's going to be jumping from spot to spot, from position to position, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's used on the edge more than he is on the defensive line, but I don't want to get away from this. We need to be careful with the usage of our main two guys. We cannot let Murphy and Williams play every snap or 90% of the snaps or even 80% of the snaps and expect them to be great at the end of the year. It's just not going to happen. So Draymond Jones, I have him getting 38 tackles. He'll get a lot more than Murphy, I think, because it's a little bit more his game and he's a veteran and he'll be playing on the edge more, which should create some more opportunities. Uh, tackles for loss, I went with six. I'm feeling a decent season from Draymond Jones. Not enough to justify the money he'll be making next year if he's here, which I don't think he will be. But he'll be good enough to where we're not mad at him anymore. I uh, went with five and a half sacks. Playing on the edge occasionally is going to help. But playing with guys like, a Leonard, guys like Leonard Williams and like Byron Murphy is going to help as well. 
and 15 pressures. So he'll have a good year. It won't be radically different from what he did last year, honestly, but big reason why that is is because there's fewer opportunities for him now because he is on a deeper defensive line with the addition of Byron Murphy, and he has the whole season playing behind Leonard Williams. Okay, the next backup on the defensive line would be Mike Morris, and I feel like there was a plan to utilize him quite a bit last year, but then he got hurt, so... I'm going to say this year, obviously, it's not going to be like it was last year where he had a lot of opportunity. This year, he might not. But you look at this. We need somebody else on this defensive line at the three-tech spot to step up. I don't think Williams and Murphy and then Draymond Jones coming in off the bench sometime is going to be enough. So I am looking to Mike Morris to do something. So I'm going to say 20 tackles. I'm going to go with two for loss. I'm going to go with one and a half sacks. We're going to keep things modest. He's not some super high prolific player. He's not going to be somebody who comes in here and just dominates. He's just going to be part of a rotation. And his presence should at least allow us to have some freedom to really rotate our players. And I'll go with the five pressures. Again, PFR pressures, they're much harder to get. And that gets us to the nose tackle group here. And we've got three of them. I do think that a guy like Jaron Reed might play uh, three tech a little bit this year because um, we have three nose tackles and it, it, the need might come a little bit more as a defensive end. But either way, we're going to lean on Reed a lot. I don't think the other two nose tackles we have are guys that we're looking to use a ton of. They're just going to be spot duty and Reed's going to be the main guy. Unless either we don't like how small he is because we have a new defense or if he just shows that he doesn't have any gas left in the tank, which is very possible. Reed's getting up there. He's been in this league a while. So I'm going to go with 45 tackles. I'm going to assume that he holds up fairly well, kind of like how he did last season. Uh, it wouldn't shock me if that number went down a decent amount, but it seems to me that moving to nose tackle rejuvenated him, so let's roll with it. So 45 tackles would be pretty strong. Uh, five tackles for loss, not going to be anything huge in the backfield. Uh, that nose tackle stuff where he doesn't have to worry as much about penetration really did him well. Also went with uh, five sacks, which would be a perfectly respectable number from a nose tackle. Uh, would be a little bit less than what he had last year, which, by the way, Reed's not going to be able to replicate what he did last year. Last year, he was playing like Warren Sapp early in the season before he ran out of gas. That's not something we can replicate. That's not reasonable to expect. And then we have pressures. I went with 17. Basically won a game. Seems reasonable to me. It's part of his skill set, even if he is playing at nose tackle. And we saw it last year. I don't think it's going to completely go away. Uh, these last two guys are the other nose tackles. I don't expect a ton here. I went with 14 tackles from Young. We are going to have to use him a decent amount. He's not just an afterthought on this team because Reed is older and is probably going to need to offer reinforcements at the defensive end spot a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm not expecting a ton here. One tackle for loss. Penetration's not really his game. Pressure's not his game. So zero sacks and one QB pressure. And it just kind of happens by fluke. Cameron Young is not a get to the quarterback kind of guy. That's just not his game. And it's fine. And then Jonathan Hankins, who we brought in from Dallas last year. Pretty good signing. Pretty interesting to me. Um, I feel like he's going to end up not playing that much. I feel like we're going to get enough between Reed and Young to where Hankins only has to play occasionally. He might even be inactive for a lot of games. Nose tackles don't quite have the impact they used to. So I'm just going to go with eight tackles. He plays occasionally, maybe gets activated for injury stuff, and no real splash plays, zero pressure, zero sacks. Again, it's not really his game, and I don't think he's going to play enough. Maybe he gets like one pressure at some point, but I'm not expecting anything significant. And that gets us to our totals here, which, I mean, I think that if we get 22 sacks and 75 PFR pressures out of our defensive line, we're doing very well. Got to be in tandem with other things. That would be a good start. That would make me feel like we're on the right track. So let me know what you think down below. Let me know how you feel about this. That's how I see things breaking out on this defensive line. So... Another prediction video should be coming out tomorrow. If not, it'll be coming out very soon. See you guys later. Go Hawks. And this is one of the strengths of the team. We need this part of the team to be good or else 
I don't see how this team has a very good season. See you guys later.